when I let's go to your fight. So a lot of times, Holly, you can prepare for a football game and it doesn't come out like you prepare. Right. In your mind, did the Rousey fight transpire as you had practiced for? Absolutely. Everything we did, everything we practiced for played out in the fight. We had um, we worked on cage work with my back on the cage because she's very good at pressuring girls under the cage. We worked on, you know, the arm bar defense. Everybody knows she's just a master at that. We worked on, you know, keeping a good range. We worked on the clinch game in the open cage. You know, she's got all of her judo background. Holly, did you ever practice with men because of her strength? Uh, my whole training camp was with my guy teammates. Um, all the girls that I train with are awesome and they're so talented. Uh, they do fight at 115 or 105. So um, to get a real good, more natural feel for a stronger person, yeah. I needed to train with the guys for this fight. So you go into that ring and it's the biggest fight of your life. And she's a superstar and she's unbeatable, which Tyson was before Buster Douglas or Foreman was before Ali and Zaire. So all that training, you step into that ring, were you a little anxious, a little nervous? Because you were facing somebody who had mm -hmm. extinguished fighters in 15 seconds. You know, um, training camp was harder. And once training camp was over, I went through all a lot of my emotions there, uh, crying a lot if I had a bad day, even crying if I had a good day because I could sense victory, um, a lot of emotions. And when the fight came, it's, you know, the hard work's done. And I kind of was at peace with it. Um, I knew millions would be watching across the entire world, not just, you know, who was at the stadium. Um, the stadium had the most attended, you know, um, people ever. ever. And I knew that, but that wasn't where it stopped. It was everybody across the world. And I already was had that process. This is whatever happens in here is going to be viewed by a lot. And I could be knocked out. I could be embarrassed or I can ex be, you know, lifted high. Um, I just thought I'm, I'm going to go in and do what I can do best. And that's all I have control over. And let's just do this. So when you get in the ring, uh, it was, you established very early control of the fight, the body language, your body language was tremendous. Um, when you land the first punch, uh, there was a redness around Rhonda, and maybe that I, I, I just, when I watched it, I thought, oh, I remember watching the Douglas Tyson fight. It took me about four rounds before mm -hmm. I was like, Tyson's not, mm -hmm. I had a sense that you felt early, mm -hmm. I, I watching your body language, you, how early before you felt she's uneven with me, she's, she doesn't feel comfortable. So it's funny that you say that, because that was actually a moment that, was significant in my mind in the fight. Um, my coaches leading up to this fight, I'd be in practice and I'd be going through a war. I'd be emotional. I'd be frustrated in practice. And they're like, Holly, you've been through wars. You've had to fight with your eyes swollen shut. You've had to fight with your lip cut. You've had to fight with your nose broken. You've had to fight with blood coming out. It's hard to breathe. And a lot of people, that's not something you can teach someone. Um, she doesn't, she hasn't really been through a war, so she doesn't know what that's like. It's unfamiliar to her. So hit her and make her feel it and make her red, make her, I mean, this is, it's not in, in a brutal way. It's just, this is a fight. We're both chasing the same dream. And if it was up to her, she'd be doing it to me. Um, so it was one of those things where when I did hit her and I started to see redness, I thought, this is, this is what, you know, let's keep on this. I want to, I want to keep going forward. I want to keep imposing my will on her and hopefully start to, you know, turn the tables on, on this. When an underdog surprises a favorite, the audience reaction is interesting. They're shock. When you are so in a zone, Holly Holm joining us, I can understand. I mean, you know, I've heard the Jordan and the Kobe stories where you just don't, you don't know what's going on. Did you hear the crowd? Did you hear them change when who's Holly Holm was smoking Ronda Rousey? You know, I I get I didn't really pay attention to that. I was just so zoned in on her, and all I could hear was my corner. What were they yelling? Um, what were they yelling? There's a lot of things they were kind of saying game plan wise in the first maybe half of the round, and then after that, all they were mostly saying is keep, stay focused, stay focused, because um, basically I knew that that meant game plan was working. Let's just let's not 
deviate. Lose sight of it yeah. and keep going. Just stay focused. And so I just thought I just was a good reminder for me, you know, let's not get careless. Let's not get reckless. So I was just trying to stay focused. And I mean, there's there was a sense of feel of I knew people were witnessing something different. OK, you did. Um, but it wasn't anything I really put a lot of thought to. It was just maybe because I knew I was I was presenting something different, you know.